Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi guys, it's Silas for Kit Guru, and today we are taking a look at the Deep Cool Gamer Storm Castle 240 RGB AIO Liquid Cooler. Now, as the name suggests, the Castle 240 RGB is a self-contained liquid cooler featuring a 240mm radiator and RGB lighting built into not only the LED fans, but also the pump slash CPU block. At £95.99, it sits relatively centred when compared to other RGB 240mm AIO coolers, and on paper, looks to be a fairly accessory laden option. One significant difference is the addressable nature of the RGB LEDs built into the Castle 240, which allows for a much greater range of effects and LED animations to be applied, as well as a much smoother transition between different colours. More on this later. In the box we find the Castle 240 cooler itself, and all the mounting hardware required for current Intel and AMD mounts alongside quite a few older sockets as well. You also receive the expected installation guide, and it's nice to see large pictures for each stage. Very easy to follow. You also get two 4-pin PWM 120mm RGB fans included with the Castle 240, which have a wider, more static pressure optimised blade design. This suits the radiator application, small rubber isolation pads are present around all of the mounting spots, which should help a little with vibration dampening. In terms of accessories and cables, it looks like Deep Cool have thought of everything. You get a PWM fan hub for connecting up to four fans. A little weird that this is triangular with all the fan connections sticking out at the top though. Depending on your case it could be a little tricky to install and it might have been a safer bet just to be manufactured flat. The fan hub is appreciated but one small point is that it would have been nice to see a simple dual PWM splitter for those who would prefer simpler insulation. You also receive a host of adapters and cables for the proprietary 3-pin RGB connections. These 3-pin connections are present on both fans and the CPU block as well. The core required cable for lighting is a single male 3-pin to 3 times female adapter, which allows you to connect both fans and the CPU pump up. Also included, a small 3-pin SATA controller if your motherboard doesn't feature an addressable RGB header, and two extra adapters if it does. This vast selection of adapters is great to see and should have you covered for all configurations, saving you have to purchase specific adapters for your chosen hardware. The Castle 240 also boasts support for all major motherboard lighting software packs, uh, Asus Aura Sync, Gigabyte RGB Fusion, MSI Mystic Lighting Sync, and ASRock's Polychrome Sync. Unfortunately, our CPU cooler test setup's motherboard doesn't include an RGB header or an addressable one, so I wasn't able to test how well these software packages would work with the Castle 240, but it's a relatively positive start to see so many bases covered, guaranteeing that the RGB lighting will work regardless of the choice of your motherboard brand. The cooler itself feels very solid, especially the block. Although predominantly plastic, there is no flex or creaking present um, when you put a little bit more strain on the tubing. The block itself is quite tall by comparison to other coolers at 71mm, which is worth bearing in mind if you had planned to install the Castle 240 in a smaller form factor case. It's also nice to see the much better looking braided coating to the tubes themselves, and at 30 centimeters long, you shouldn't have any trouble reaching the front or top of your case. The radiator, as mentioned, is a 240 millimeter unit and is 27 millimeters thick. There is an extended fill port for the radiator position next to the tubing. This is not designed for maintenance, more just for the original production, and a large warranty voided if removed sticker can be found covering this inlet. Installation is pretty easy going. You first need to install your preference of Intel or AMD mounts to the CPU block with the included screws. The backplate also needs to be prepared with longer screws to pass through the motherboard. There are also four plastic caps which need to be added to the backplate to ensure the metal backplate backing doesn't make contact with the back of your motherboard. Once this is in place, you add a small amount of the included thermal compound and place the CPU block over the socket. The block is then mounted using four thumb screws. It is definitely worth looking over the manual to ensure for best performance, as there is recommended orientation for the CPU block, depending on whether you're installing in an ATX or an EATX system. For the AMD TR4 and Intel 2011 sockets, rather than installing the backplate, you simply install the four socket-specific double screws into the motherboard's existing threads. For mounting, the radiator included are both long fan screws and case screws, depending on your mounting preferences. Once physically installed in your case, you can plug in the fans using the included fan hub and choose the correct adapters for connecting the RGB LEDs. 
As I mentioned previously, I used the SATA powered RGB controller adapter as our testing board doesn't feature an RGB header. Installation does require a little more work than some coolers I have used before from brands like Corsairs, say for instance, but with the instructions in hand, the process only took around about 10 minutes. One small note with the cooler installed is that the plain metal mounting parts do look a little out of place atop an almost black motherboard. I think it would have been much better if these parts had been black um, or colour matched to the darker grey of the CPU block. Just a thought. On to testing. At KitGuru we have recently updated our testing setup and now test temperatures on the more recent Z170 platform. For CPUs, we are testing with the Intel Core i7-7700K installed on an Asus Z170 Pro Gaming motherboard. For RAM, we have a single 8GB stick of Guile Evo X RGB for some added bling, running at 3200MHz, and storage is handled by a 120GB SanDisk SSD+. Powering our bench is a Seasonic Prime Platinum 650W PSU. This change does also mean that we don't have as much comparison data, uh, but we have run through a few coolers to provide an idea of where the Castle 240 sits compared to the competition. When testing, we take a number of readings with both the i7-7700K's turbo locked and overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz. The temperatures taken are delta T values, meaning we subtract the ambient temperature from the CPU temperature. More details of our full testing methodology can be found on kitguru.net. So the testing results actually look pretty good. The Castle 240 sits right in between the GamerStorm Captain 240 RGB and the Cryorig A80, which is unsurprising as the A80 has a slightly larger 280mm radiator. All three have similar dual fan configurations and it's nice to see a temperature drop from the older GamerStorm Captain 240 RGB EX, uh, more noticeable when the i7 7700K was overclocked to 4.5GHz. The Castle 240 did turn out to be slightly louder than the Captain 240, but only minorly by one decibel or so. But with testing, the PWM fan controller included with the Castle 240 wasn't put to use, so there is the potential to set up a more silence-optimised fan profile through software, if this is your preference. One of the big selling points of the Castle 240 is its addressable RGB functionality, and in this respect, I was actually really impressed. Although I hadn't been able to play with the lighting in software, the standard controller provided LED effects are significantly more impressive than other RGB coolers I have seen in the past. Colours flow very evenly from one to the other seamlessly in rainbow modes and colour spiralling. Effects on both the CPU block and fans look great. A big improvement on the flash on flash off through colours typically found with standard RGB coolers. The modes accessible through the controller are relatively standard spiralling and breathing modes, uh, but a really unique touch is the spiralling colourway effect, uh, which matches complementary colours. There isn't a huge amount of choice when it comes to these colours, uh, but the colour mixes Deep Cool have run with should still work with most of the more popular system colour schemes, and there is always the option to stick with one solid colour if you're not a fan of the pre-configured colour mixes. The addressable nature of these LEDs is a really smart move by Deepcool and certainly makes the Castle 240 one of the better looking coolers available to date. Syncing it with your motherboard's RGB software would offer much more flexibility through programming if there is a particular pattern or set of colours that you would prefer as well. Overall, the Deepcool GamerStorm Castle 240 RGB is a really cool piece of kit. It does a good job with both cooling the CPU and keeping noise in check, even under heavy loads, but in this respect it's not really super standout. It's not the absolute best cooler by any means, but for £95.99, pence, it does its job well enough. The package is also well thought out with relatively quick and easy installation, and the inclusions of lots of varied connecting cables is also a big tick in the Castle 240's favour. If you're looking for a more unique cooler, which stands out from the hordes of single colour or outright non-LED coolers available, and has admirers of your rig saying wow, then the Deep Cool GamerStorm Castle 240 RGB will not disappoint. It's definitely worth considering a motherboard with an addressable RGB header, however, if you are planning on building the Castle 240 into a new system to make full use of the gorgeous LED lighting. Make sure you like this video if you liked it, and don't forget to hit subscribe for future videos. If you don't want to miss the next video, feel free to click the bell icon below for notifications of new video releases from KitGuru. I've been Silas for KitGuru, and I will see you in the next one.